There we are. Hey, yeah. How's it going? Bo, what's up, man? Not a whole lot. Can you uh, can you hear me all right? I got you. I can hear you loud and clear. Okay, fantastic. Uh, yeah, good afternoon from uh, Brooklyn. <laughs> yeah, how are things? How are things going out in Brooklyn? Good, good. You know, we're starting to get a little bit of that fall weather. Starting to leaves change, add some more layers. I've got a flannel shirt on today. Um, so it's, it's all, it's all kind of, all kind of happening, heading into that, the best season in menswear is what I always say. Uh, so that's, that's all good in my neck of the woods. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. You're totally right. I mean, I think fall really brings on, um, a dynamic kind of, uh, season for guys cause you can, you know, really get creative with layering. Um, you can really play with a lot of different materials and patterns. So, um, I couldn't agree more with you. I think, uh, for a lot of people falls, uh, a really popular kind of style um, season for sure. Uh, that's kind of where all the good stuff comes out anyway, right before the holidays. And uh, you, you know, you know all about this because you're you're a writer for for Maxim for Gear Moose. Um, yeah, why, why don't you take a couple minutes to uh, just tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, uh, for sure. So again, um, based in Brooklyn, uh, I'm a men's uh, style and lifestyle writer. Um, again, as you said, I write for Maxim, um, write for Gear Moose um, almost daily. Um, I write also for the Huckberry Journal, um, which, which is recently revamped and is really exciting um, to be a part of the team there. Um, and I, I also have my own blog, um, The Style Guide, which is mentioned in my bio, if people want to go check that out. Totally. Um, and so that, that blog is where it all started uh, back in college, and then uh, just a matter of, of pitching and reading um, – you know, voraciously men's style blogs, um, you know, about seven or eight years ago, kind of wave really um, took off. Um, so I was fortunate enough to um, utilize my background in journalism and PR at uh, Michigan State um, to secure uh, an internship at Bonobos uh, here in New York. Oh, wow. Yeah. So that was cool. where I started um, on the fashion PR team there. Um, and that was my first summer in New York. Um, and then I spent about uh, almost six years at two different PR agencies doing uh, fashion PR um, for clients like uh, Timberland and Alpha Industries um, and K-Swiss. Uh, but all the while, um, freelance writing, working on my blog, um, building my Instagram. And then uh, actually th this summer... Um, you know, not, not too long, I think, before we connected, uh, I had made the jump to sort of full-time um, writing. Um, so that's where I am now. <laughs> that's great. I mean, it's probably uh, um, a rewarding transition. I mean, I know what it's like to be an entrepreneur. I guess you're kind of um, playing in that category now where you're, you're probably hunting out your own, um, you know, your, your own pieces and your own opportunities. So uh, are, are you enjoying that journey so far? Yeah, absolutely. It's um, it's it's definitely a hustle, and there's definitely, uh, um, you know, those elements that you don't think about, um, you know, the minutia of like the four hundred one k rollover and insurance and uh, things like that. But um, that that hasn't been, uh, you know, knock on wood, that hasn't been too much of a a burden so far. Um, so I've been able to really you know, focus on, on writing and, and generating ideas and um, ha having time to, you know, enjoy Brooklyn um, as well as work on some of those creative pursuits, um, which is always, you know, that, that's all you can ask for, I think. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so you're originally from Florida, I believe, right? Uh, originally from Michigan. Um, oh, from, from Michigan, okay. I did move to Florida um, about uh, seven, eight years ago. Um, so, um, still have family in Michigan, um, go back to Michigan occasionally and go to Florida uh, a bit more than that. Yeah. So, I mean, setting up shop in, in Brooklyn is pro probably looks a very, very different from, you know, Michigan or Florida. Um, I I'm curious actually why, uh, in terms of like, you know, you're coming to New York, obviously you're coming to pursue your career, do big things. Uh, which it seems like you're doing, and, you know, you kind of decide on Brooklyn. Why Brooklyn? Because most people are, you know, it's always, the, the the whole cliche is like, I'm moving to the to the island, to the big city, to, you know, the concrete jungle. Um, 
And I know Brooklyn's obviously quite popular now, but like, why, why did you decide to land there? Yeah. So, um, and I've lived in Brooklyn for about six years, uh, actually more than six years. So, um, for me, it had, uh, it had sort of this appeal. Um, I, I'm big into music and into indie rock. And so, um, you know, across the past 10, 12 years, it seems like Brooklyn had that next wave and that, that appealed to me. And I think, you know, in some respects it had more, uh, more space. Um, you had more, more opportunity to reflect and, um, enjoy Prospect Park and, uh, just had a little bit more of those elements that reminded me, let's say, of, of maybe of Michigan or the Midwest a little Very cool. I mean, listen, I, I, every time I go to New York and, you know, just for some context, since I've been a teenager, I've probably been to New York like 10 to 12 times. And, you know, I would say over the last like six times, it, you know, Brooklyn has always been, uh, you know, a topic of discussion as to whether we should spend some time there. But it seems like every single time there's a new area that is like trending or, you know, super popular. And I, I remember the first time I went there was like Williamsburg or, or um, what is it, Bushwick. But then you know, Dumbo became really popular. Um, I, you know, it, it's like, it, it's ever changing. Uh, so where, where are you set up? Yeah. So that's another thing I Brooklyn think is that, um, I'm in a neighborhood called Midwood, um, which is about, I guess, midway between, uh, Prospect Park and Coney Island. Um, so for me, those are sort of my two landmarks. Um, so, you know, Midwood is, has very much a, a community feel, um, I live right by um, a high school. I live right by an elementary school. Um, I have a bit longer subway ride. Um, but it's it's always nice because when I am coming back from Manhattan, I'm able to stop at places in Brooklyn kind of as I'm coming home. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I'm able to have a little more space. It's it's a little more affordable. Um, and there's definitely just that that community feel. Um, so I, I've been here in Midwood actually for five years. Um, so I kind of have some, uh, you know, I adopted sort of mini neighborhoods in addition to where I am, um, here, here in Midwood. Very cool. Very cool. So let, let's get, let's get into the nitty gritty of, uh, you know, of Brooklyn. Uh, obviously you've been there for, you mentioned five years. So he, your ear has been to the ground for a while. You know, the, you know, the ins and outs. Um, so if, you know, if someone was, was coming to Brooklyn, now, now first of all, w would you say that someone at this point would need Brooklyn to be its own trip to like fully discover Brooklyn? Or, you know, can you still kind of couple up a day trip with like a trip to Manhattan? Or like, what, like what, will your, what will your time frame be on, on getting the best um, experience and vibe from Brooklyn? Yeah, I mean, I, I would say certainly when I have um, friends visit or when I did have friends visit um, over the years, um, we, we would definitely be mostly focused on Brooklyn. I mean, I'm a little biased. Um, yeah. <laughs> I, you know, could do, I, I, I mean, to me, it's definitely a day. It, 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 certainly you could do a day just in Greenpoint and Williamsburg um, and maybe Bushwick, for example. Um, and, and you could even, you could probably add on another day um, in, in some other parts. Um, so, so yeah, to me, it's definitely at the minimum, pro probably, probably its own day. Yeah, for sure. It sounds like a day to two days. That's what I, that's what I think. Yeah. 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 So, um, you know, you might be slightly biased here, but let's say for a first timer, like where, like what hotel would you set up in? Like what area, what would be like your, your best advice in terms of doing that? Maybe not necessarily, um, you know, the tr it doesn't have to be because it's the trendiest hotel, although that would be a great recommendation. But, um, you know, sometimes I, I feel when I'm getting, going somewhere for the first time, it's, it's more about like a really great proximity to a bunch of different things. Because, you know, from experience being in New York, if your hotel is at like one end of the island and, you know, you're venturing to the other end, you're basically only sleeping at your hotel. You're not really using it as a place to kind of recover or refresh. Um, so I'm, you know, just keeping that in perspective, but yeah, where, where would you, where would you set up? Yeah, um, that, that's a good question. Uh, I mean, definitely um, Dumbo and Williamsburg have 
that nice mix of proximity, but really quality um, in terms of your, your lodgings. Um, I mean, the, the Williamsburg Hotel is, you know, from what I know, it, it's definitely, it's, it's um, you know, it's trendy, it's quality, it's kind of right there in Williamsburg. You can get to Dumbo, you can get to Greenpoint, you can get to Bushwick. Um, and, you know, from what I know, it's, it's um, the, the rooms, you know, well, quite nice. I don't, it's, uh, it's, you know, I think it's sort of economical in terms of it's, you know, it's, it's, you're not going to be having a huge sort of corner suite where you want to be in the room all the time. Right. I mean, I would love if there was an Ace Hotel in Brooklyn. Um, there's an Ace Hotel in Manhattan. Yeah. Uh, but I, I would say definitely, um, uh, yeah, some, something like the Williamsburg Hotel. It's even, you know, it's got that nice, to it, nice room. The, Will the Williamsburg, it's not right on the water, is it? Is that the one that's right on the water now? Uh, I mean, it's about, uh, it's about a couple blocks away. Okay, yeah, I, I think I can picture it. Um, okay, so what are, you know, when, once we get set up there, we're, we're cozy, we know where, where we're sleeping. What are, you know, some of the key things to do, things to see? Um, like, you know, I guess kind of take me through like a day of, um, where I'm gonna, what I'm gonna go see, what I'm gonna do, what I'm, maybe where I'm gonna stop for a drink or, or grab a bite to eat, um, and, and yeah, we can kind of approach it that way because I think, you know, in the context of having a day, maybe just a day to do do things, uh, we want to hit the best spots, right? Right. So, I mean, I think if, and again, this is sort of where it, uh, you, you could have, you know, multiple or you know, a day, maybe even in just a small section of. But so if, I, if I'm in like a Williamsburg type area, um, I would say you're going to get coffee at Upstate Stock. Um, it's a super cool, and maybe you're familiar with it. Um, yeah, super cool. Uh, it's, it's home goods, menswear, accessories, coffee. Um, they have a really robust um, like dry goods offering. Um, it's, it's a really neat spot, um, you know, with a really nice long reclaimed wood table. And so... Um, great, great spot to start the day. Um, and, and from there, you can kind of stroll along the water. Um, you can hit up Domino Park, um, or you can hop straight to Rough Trade NYC, uh, which is one of my favorite spots. Um, so that, that's a, you know, acclaimed record store. Um, cool. so, so maybe, you know, you browse the, browse the bins there for a while, leave with some purchases, <laughs> um, drop them off because you're going to want to come out of there with a lot of records probably. Yeah. I, I, I always I would go there and I would say next time. Um, I, I think rough trade. Um, from there, you can get into Greenpoint and you can go to Three's Brewing. So I'm, I'm a craft beer guy. Um, big time. Yeah, I was, uh, you know, we were getting there. I, th this was going to come up because I know you're a big beer guy. So that's great. So what's it called? Okay. And that's their, uh, their Greenpoint outpost. Um, alternative, alternatively, further south in uh, Brooklyn, um, they have the full-scale brewery. So I guess it's sort of uh, maybe spend some time in Williamsburg, go south um, to their, their further south Brooklyn outpost, which has an amazing um, um, in sort of rotating in-house kitchen. Uh, so you're going to eat lunch in the backyard there. Um, and I think fr from there, it's, that area is just really nice to walk around. Uh, you can even hit up another brewery or two in that area. Um, but then sort of looking towards the, the nightlife aspect, um, it, and it does depend on what's going on, but you're always going to find something cool and unique at Elsewhere, uh, which is a Bushwick um, club, art gallery, art space. And, okay. Um, in the in the before times, it's a primary music venue, um, but they do have an upper uh, roof area with some great skyline views. Um, you can get some cocktails there, kind of make that the focal point of, of your evening. Um, so those are just kind of some of the, the highlights. <laughs> yeah, and like who doesn't love a good skyline view um, over some cocktails? You know, at, at, during the night. So. Um, that, I think uh, that's one of my MOs when I'm, you know, in the New York or Brooklyn area. It's like, where are the best rooftop patios, you know? Yeah, yeah. No, no doubt. Um, 
and uh, I haven't actually been there, unfortunately, but um, the William Vale is actually probably a great dinner and cocktail spot uh, back up in Williamsburg, um, not far from uh, the Williamsburg Hotel. It's, it's, oh, so that, that, it comes full circle. <laughs> For sure. Very cool, very cool. Um, in terms of like, is there any, I guess, landmarks uh, in terms of, you know, this this might not be the hippest question, but, um, you know, people that are going somewhere for the first time, are, are they're always looking for um, like main attractions or landmarks, you know, like if you're in Manhattan, you're gonna go see the Statue of Liberty, you're gonna go see the World Trade Center, Empire State Building, et cetera. Is there any um, key kind of like, you know, landmarks or monuments or anything like that that you, you think are important in, in Brooklyn that people should check out? Um, yeah, I think it's always cool to see Grand Army Plaza uh, right near Prospect Park. Um, and they actually, they have a farmer's market. Uh, I think that's probably on Saturdays. Um, so that, that's just a cool bit of history. Um, and from there, you can also um, uh, get to, you know, the, the Brooklyn Public Library is kind of an esteemed, um, at least, you know, that cool exterior view. Um, but then you've also got further to, to the north, uh, you've also got, um, you know, the Brooklyn Bridge Park, and even just walking sort of those historical cobblestone streets of Dumbo, um, you're going to sort of see cool views, you know, everywhere you look, especially if you're on the water in Dumbo. Very cool. Man, I'm really, I'm getting the urge to just like come back to New York. I can't, I can't wait till you know, the borders are open and, and the travel resumes. Okay, so um, I think we've touched on a bit. In, in terms of sh shopping, like you're obviously, uh, you know, your Instagram feed is full of different outfits, um, obviously full of a lot of the work that you, you do in terms of writing with, with mentions. And, and so you got your ear to the ground when it comes to menswear. But besides upstate and stock, are there any other, um, you know, shopping destinations that, you know, are, that are on your kind of, your radar and uh, it doesn't even necessarily have to be menswear. Like we can loop some stuff in for, for the ladies in here too. Yeah. Um, so Buck Mason definitely comes to mind right away on the menswear front. Um, they have a relatively newly opened um, Williamsburg location. Um, and then down on Smith street, you're going to find a pretty good variety. Um, I, and you know, the, the name is escaping me right now. Um, Gosh, I should know the name of this boutique. It's Smith Street. You're, go you're going to find a number of boutiques. Um, and, uh, I, you know, the name's escaping me. I, I need to get back. Don't worry about it. We're going we're gonna to circle back with you, and we're going to get this all in a blog post. So we'll be able to dot the I's and cross the T's for sure. Yeah, okay. Not, not to worry. Um, that, yeah, definitely Smith Street was an interesting um, kind of, you know, destination. I mean, you're going to find shopping to be able to kind of at the at the end of the tunnel um, or at the end of the, the, the street um, there's going to be other brewing which is also a cool uh, Brooklyn location so so yes Smith Street seems to have you know that nice nice mix of shopping and uh, all that that you always like cool very cool so th this might be like an ignorant question because um, you know I don't get to I don't get to Brooklyn that often or to New York but like I always indulge in Brooklyn lager, but coming from a, you know, beer enthusiast, beer connoisseur, um, you know, is Brooklyn lager, lager kind of one of those beers now that's just like, you know, it, it's just like commonplace and no one really drinks it or is it still, you know, pretty popular kind of beer? So it's, definitely, it's definitely ubiquitous. Um, I would never say no to a pint of it. Um, <laughs> and, you know, again, going back to the itinerary, not, you know, not far from Williamsburg Hotel, you can walk right to the brewery itself, um, which is a very cool experience. And, you know, that's sort of, uh, if, you're a, if you're a craft beer lover, or if you even just want some, you know, a sort of a tried and true Brooklyn OG spot, um, they, they set up shop there. Um, when the area was Still, as the story goes, when the area was still controlled by uh, so uh, 
Very cool. Okay, I got a bit of a lag here. Oh, we got you back. We got you back. Okay. There we go. Um, okay, so in terms of like, you know, preparing for a trip, uh, obviously, you know, we're big on our weekender bags and you're big on your clothing. So um, let's collaborate here and, and let's, you know, let's get some key pieces that, uh, you know, someone might need going to, to, to Brooklyn for, for a weekend, I guess, or a day. Let's say, let's call it a weekend because, you know, you're going to need two days at this point. So, um, yeah, what are, what are some key things? And maybe we could focus on the fall, but let's, let's maybe try to think of some uh, trans-seasonal products. But stuff that, you know, you, you definitely need when, when taking a trip out to Brooklyn. Yeah, for sure. So, um, for me, I mean, I, uh, especially if it's the spring or the fall, um, maybe even the summer, you're going to want uh, a good denim jacket. Um, I, I'm 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 big on having you know pockets for your your everyday carry, so you don't have to kind of make multiple trips back to. Um, mm -hmm. your, um, so I'm thinking like denim jacket uh, and or a field jacket um, for that utility. Um, I'm thinking uh, you've got maybe your uh, black jeans for for a night out. Um, you've got blue denim or chinos during the day. Um, you've got uh, your brown leather chukka boot, which I think you can wear with black jeans or blue jeans uh, for a little bit of that versatility. Um, I think you can go with, you know, high top sneakers. Uh, can't go wrong there, especially in Brooklyn. Uh, a chambray shirt is going to pull double duty during the day or, or, or during the night. Um, and I think if you want to go a little bit dressy, you can go with, you know, a casual sort of stretch cotton blazer um that you can even wear on the plane to free up some space in your weekend um and then you know i think you can look at sort of a casual um nato strap watch or more of a, a dressier sort of leather strap watch or both um and uh yeah i think you can build quite a few outfits yeah totally you know i, I always i always like to this, this, this question is always very interesting to me because for me, it's always like, how can you get the most out of the least? Right. And I think you listed like some really, really great pieces there that, uh, you know, really, you can actually mix and match with, with each other. So, you know, if you're only there for a day, you really don't need much, but you know, if you're there for a couple, you can, you can mix a chambray shirt with the chinos and mix a t-shirt with the black jeans and then swap it out the next day. And you got a completely different look. Uh, so when you're posting on Instagram, people, doesn't look like you're recycling clothing. Right. Yeah, no doubt. Cool. That's what it's all about. Yeah, absolutely. Um, all right. That's great. Um, really great recommendations. Uh, what, in terms of like a travel hack, you know, I'm all about like discovering new tricks. Uh, you know, I, I always tell people my favorite travel hack is just having Nexus, um, which, you know, gets us across the border. Uh, when we go to the U.S. really quickly, but um, do you have anything that kind of stands out to you where uh, it's it's like your go-to kind of trick uh, that you've kind of picked up along the way to, to help you either like streamline your travels or it's maybe it's a way to pack, whatever the case may be. Is there anything that sticks out in your in your head? Yeah, I mean, definitely, and we've talked about um, your weekender bags. So definitely for me, even even if I'm going, you know, somewhere for four or five days or or you know, a week. Um, I'm definitely, I'm not taking more basic in that case, but um, I'm taking it all in a weekender bag and I'm not going to check a bag um, is my uh, hat. So I'm taking the the, the, uh, the weekender bag right on the plane um, to save, save a little bit. Um, I, I think a lot of people do that, but uh, um, another thing, just, 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 you know, for sort of space, um, put your socks in your shoes you know, little, little things like, um, so, you know, you can, you can not be super weighed down with just the one weekend or bag, um, but be a, a little bit lighter. Um, and then maybe, you know, you've got sort of a, a tote bag, um, you know, rolled up, packed within the weekend or bag. So that can be your day bag when you're uh, out. That's a great hack. That's a great hack. Cause a lot of people, um, they have that concern. It's like, well, 
now I have the weekender bag with my clothes in the hotel room. Like, what if I need something to carry? That's actually a really great point. I mean, you could take your stuff out and put it in the drawers of the hotel, but that's a great little trick. Um, if you have a foldable tote, um, you could even fit hours in there, but, uh, you know, I, you know, you probably maybe want something a little bit more foldable. That's a, that's a great, uh, that's a great hack. And, you know, just to touch on the, the weekender bag and, and the carry on scenario. Um, what I've noticed lately is because since airlines started charging fees to check bags, you start to see a lot of people trying to bring on rolly suitcases. And what happens is the, all the overhead bins get full and they end up forcing you to check those bags. So now instead of saving time, you've got to wait at the carousel anyway, um, which kind of defeats the whole purpose. And, you know, that's why I really like having, uh, that's why I, I usually travel with a weekender bag for shorter trips because I like the option of, sliding it under the seat so I can have everything I need right there versus even if I have a rolly, it's got to be up top and then, you know, you, oh, you, you want something, you got to take it down, unzip it. It seems like a bit of a hassle, but um, yeah, I'm glad you, I'm glad you pointed that out. That's a, a great little trick. Um, so before I let you go, why don't, uh, why don't we tell people who are either watching this now or going to watch this post on YouTube or on our blog or wherever, um, you know, where they can connect with you and maybe, you know, you have something going on uh, that you're working on that you want to share. Um, but yeah, go ahead. Um, yeah. So first and foremost, um, Instagram at Bo Hey Ho, B-E-A-U-H-A-Y-H-O-E. -E. Um, from there, I've, I've listed, out, um, you know, various publications for which I write. Um, but that is also all going to be at my blog, um, which is the, dash style dash guide.com i couldn't get just the style guide without the day um so it's the style guide um if you google that I, you should be able to find it i think the search engine optimization is pretty good um okay. so that's the blog. um i frequently mention my other file lines um i also have a newsletter called the style guide in brief uh, which again i also mentioned <laughs> on my blog um, and on my, you know, Instagram stories and things like that. So um, ho hopefully there's a, a one-stop shop in there for people to find me. Yeah, absolutely. And we're going to link this all back on our blog and uh, in our next email newsletter. So not to worry, we'll make sure that we point people in the, in the right place. And um, I hope people connect with you because uh, you're really active on Instagram, putting out all sorts of fresh content across a bunch of different publications. So uh, I encourage everyone to follow, um, and definitely for some style inspo and uh, to stay up to date on some of the like coolest gear and gadgets going on. So, uh, yeah, I'm I'm grateful for for you joining me on uh, on this episode of Travel Talk. Bo it was great. Uh, I think uh, I'm I'm coming to Brooklyn. I hope soon. So, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll definitely have to have a pint. Yeah, absolutely. We'll we'll, we'll hit all the spots. And thank you. <laughs> Anytime. We'll do it again sometime soon. All right. Sounds great. Thank you. Awesome. Take care. Thanks.